Hello there guys. So we're finally starting the crop system today. Because there's so much to get through, I've broken this up into multiple videos because otherwise this would be hours long. For today, we're gonna import our crop sprites, make all the crop objects, set up a planting mode so that when we're in planting mode, we create a crop wherever we click. And we're going to use a data system called a DS grid to make the different crop types. And it's this last one that I wanna take the most care with because we're actually going to be creating and using these grids a lot going forward. So I want you to have a solid understanding of what they are and how they work. And today we're just starting slow and creating just the one. So let's go over what our grid data structure is actually gonna look like. So I'm sure you've seen a grid before. It's a box with rows and columns. And along here, you can see I've numbered each row and column. And take note that I haven't started at one, as with a lot of things in programming, we're actually starting at zero. So our first column is zero. Now let's talk about grid coordinates. So the grid has these two axes. This is the X axis going across and this is the Y axis here coming down. So let's say I want to refer to a specific cell in the grid. So one of these little boxes, I would give you a grid coordinate. So, so for example, if I give you the coordinate one, three, so remember coordinates always go X, Y, so the one here is referring to the X axis. So we come to here and the three is referring to the Y axis. So we go here. So this is the cell with the coordinate one, three. Let's just do one more. So for the coordinate three, zero. So the X coordinate is three over here and the Y coordinate is zero. So this is our cell. Okay, moving on. So, and this is where things can get a little bit confusing because of the whole starting at zero thing. But if we talk about the grids width and height, we would count the rows and the columns here to get the width and height. So this grid, it has a width of one, two, three, four, and a height of seven. All right, and now let's talk about our grid. When we make our data structure, we're gonna call it DS for data structure, and then crops and types. We're gonna have a couple of grids and we're just gonna use this naming convention. It might sound a little odd, but it's gonna help us later on. And in this grid, we're gonna be storing two kinds of information for now. We'll probably add more later, but this is just what we're doing for now. So the first one, and this is gonna go in the very first column, so column zero. This is gonna be the crop's growth stage duration, which just means the number of days until it goes to the next growth stage. So if we have this plant right here, and let's say it's in growth stage number two or something, the growth stage duration would refer to the number of days it takes until it gets to the next growth stage. And so this would just kind of be represented in the game by going to a new sprite. So obviously a crop that takes longer to grow is gonna have a longer growth stage duration, and we can set this as different numbers for different crops. And the second thing we're gonna define in the crop type is its cost, as in how much do we get from selling it? So that means we have two types of data to put in our grid. Again, I'm sure you can imagine many more. We might say, have a growth season to say, you know, that this crop grows during the summer or the spring, but we'll just keep it as these two for now to keep it nice and simple. Okay, so we've got two types of data in our grid, and these are gonna go in the first two columns. So column zero and column one, and this means we're gonna have a width of two. Now, what about the height? Well, the height is just gonna be however many crop types we have. And we're actually gonna be writing a script that will add a new crop type whenever we want, but more on that later. So this is what our grid is gonna look like. As you can see, here's our two columns and I have seven crops, which is why I've got seven rows filled in right here, but you could have more or less, that's totally fine. And I've basically just made up some numbers here for the growth stage duration and the cost. Again, you can put different numbers. The system will be able to account for it. And then for our own sake, I'm just gonna add some headings. So now you can see which crop type is which. And actually this order is going to be really important later. So the order here that you see with the tomatoes first and then the potato, carrot, and so on, this is gonna come up again and again. And in fact, these numbers right here, they're gonna serve as a sort of index for the different crops. So tomatoes will be at zero, the potatoes will be at one and so on. So for example, when we draw the crops and we're going to be using a similar system to the one that we set up for our people, we're gonna have this one big sprite sheet and we're gonna be drawing just part of the sprite. So if the crop is a tomato, then we'll want it to be drawing things in this row. And if it's a carrot, it'll be drawing stuff in this row. So again, we have row zero being the tomato, row one, two, and so on. And then the thing that determines which of these five sort of stages that it's drawing, will be whatever growth stage it's in. All right, so with that planning out of the way, I think we're ready to get coding. Let's go over to Game Maker. Okay, so first off, we're gonna be importing our new sprites. So I'm gonna create a new group and call this crops. And we'll import the first one. 
and we'll click on this one. And this is the kind of sprite atlas for the crops. So we'll call this one SPR crops. And next is sort of the crops when they've been picked. So SPR crops picked. So and import. Something handy that you can do when you're importing sprites to GameMaker, if you have this on the end of it, this underscore strip, and then a number, when you import it, it's going to treat your sprite as a strip image and it's going to cut it up and put it into individual frames for you. Right here, you can see I've called this strip seven and that's because there's seven different crops. So if I just hit open, it automatically imports it into the different frames. So that's pretty handy. And we'll do the same for the little sparkle. And this is just going to be the thing that appears when the crop is fully grown to, to let the player know that it's finished growing and it's ready to be picked. There we go. All right, and now let's add a couple of new objects. Let's add the crops group again to keep our project nice and organized. So the first object we'll make is just the crop itself. So I'm going to call this OBJ crop. And for the sprite, I'm just going to give it this one for now, just so that we get this in the project window. But we're actually going to be drawing the crops from that sprite sheet up here. So for now, I just want to set up our OBJ crop, and this is going to be all of the individual crops. So we're going to have to give it all the variables we were talking about and get it drawing the correct sprite part. Okay, and the first two variables I want is going to be frame width and frame height. And these are going to equal the frame width and height of one of the individual frames here. So if I just put on this grid and I can tell you that each frame is 32 by 64 here. So you can see this gives us the different frames for the crops. So back here we can put in 32 and 64. But obviously if you've got a different sprite sheet then you're going to have to change these numbers accordingly. All right the next thing we're going to do is the crop type. So I'm just going to put zero. And if you remember from before, from when we were setting up, this zero was going to be the tomato. And this is just going to be the index of the different rows. So here we've got the tomatoes. I think this is the potatoes, the carrots, artichokes, and so on. All right. So the default is just a tomato, but we'll be changing this later. We'll also set up days old to just be zero at the start. The growth stage. And just keep in mind that these two things are different. We can be three days old and still be in growth stage one. It's just going to depend on our growth stage duration. And remember, this is the thing that we'll be getting from our data structure. So finally, we're going to have max growth stage. And so this is just going to get the very last growth stage for the crops. And again, I'm going to set this up so that it'll work for whatever sized crop sprite that you've got. So we're going to write sprite get width of SPR crops. So this is going to get the width and then we're going to go over frame width minus one. So for example, if we've got a sprite that is 100 pixels wide and a frame width that is 25, then our maximum growth stage is going to be four minus one. And we have to put the minus one because of how our data structure and everything starts at zero. All right, and next we're going to put fully grown equals false because it's not fully grown yet. And we'll have sparkle equals false. And remember the sparkle was going to be the little flourish effect that would tell the player when it was fully grown. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get it drawing the right thing. So if we come into the draw event and just like before, we're going to say draw sprite part. So kind of just like with the curly braces, you can actually do this with just normal brackets. You can have things on multiple lines if you've got a very long line, which this is going to be. So down here is the arguments that we have to give it, the sprite. So SPR crops, the sub image. And remember there's just one frame. So sub image zero, because it starts at zero. And now we have to give it the coordinates on the sprite to draw. So a left top and then a width and height. So this is going to be just like before with our people, we want to be giving it this top corner here, 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 depending on whatever growth stage it's in, so that it's drawing just this much every time. So we're going to say growth stage times the frame width so that we can get the number of pixels. Crop type times frame height. Because remember, crop type is going to be equal to 
a number from zero to six for all of the different crop types. Remember, tomatoes were zero, potatoes were one, carrots were three, and so on. So we're going to get zero times 64, one times 64, and so on. And finally, the width and height. Well, we know that. That's just 32 and 64. And finally, a coordinate to draw all of this. And for now, we'll just put x, y. So that should do us for now. Let's come into our farm room and let's put in a crop. Make sure we're on the instances layer and bring in the crop. And because of all of the variables that we set up, we should actually just see a dirt pit because we set everything to zero. So I might actually just change that so that we start at stage, let's say four. There we go. So that's working perfectly. Okay. So I'm actually just going to delete this because we're going to be creating crops with the mouse. So we're going to create another object called crops and we're going to set up a planting mode so that if we're in planting mode and we click with the mouse, we're going to create a crop. And this crops object, this is sort of going to be one of the meta objects. I might actually move it in there because this is going to be the manager for the entire crops system. And actually we're going to go ahead and tick persistent and bring it into our room zero because this object is going to persist throughout the game. It's going to be where we put all of the data structures. It's going to be taking care of the crops, different growths and the creating of the crops. So let's jump into its create event. And the first thing we're going to do is just initialize the variable that's going to be storing the data structure grid. So we're going to call this, remember, ds crops types. And for now, I'm just going to set that to zero. So it's not a grid yet. It's just a variable that's equal to zero because we're actually going to be creating the grid on our mouse click. The next thing I'm going to do is just like I was kind of saying before with the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six being a kind of index for all our crops. We're going to create an enumerator similar to what we did with the directions when we we're doing the facing of the player. So enum crop, and we're going to have all of the crops here. So I could write tomato equals zero, potato equals one, and so on. But these are actually the default values for enumerators. So if you just put tomato comma, just like this, it's going to take care of that for us. Carrot, artichoke, chili, gerd. By the way, I've called it a gerd, but I actually am not 100% sure if that's what it is. So if you've got a better idea what this plant is, please leave that in the comments because I've asked a few people and we're not a hundred percent. Okay. So back to the crops. And our last one was the corn. Now the next thing we're going to do is create a script and this script is going to create the different crop types. So right here, we can create a new script and we can call this bit of code from anywhere you want. They're kind of like functions. It's like setting up your own function. And we're going to call this create crop type. Basically what we're going to do is we can just call it from within here like this, create crop type. And then we can give it some arguments, for example, for our tomato like this. And we're going to have it take care of that for us and set up the crop type for the tomato just by giving it these variables here. So remember, this first one was going to be the growth stage duration. So for tomatoes, I'm saying that it's going to take four days for it to move between growth stages. And I'm saying that I'm going to sell them for 40 nebulous currency. But you can see right here that GameMaker is kind of complaining and that's because we haven't set up the script yet. So let's go do that. And when you're making your script, it's important to leave a description so that when you're writing it in code elsewhere, that you can see what the script needs, what kind of arguments it needs. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to write at description, create crop type, just the name of the script. And we're going to have two arguments here. We're going to say arg growth stage duration. It's the first one. And the second one is the cost. So now if I come back to crops and we type this function in, it's going to get a description and the type of arguments that it wants. The first thing I want to do is get the number of arguments that we've given the script, because remember what I was saying before about it being important to try and generalize everything. If we're introducing more arguments later, this script will be able to adapt. So we're going to make a variable arg num. And this is going to be equal to the argument count. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do. So if this is the very first time that we're calling this script, the very first crop type that we're creating, the grid data structure doesn't actually exist yet. So we have to create it. So first we check if DS doesn't exist, DS crop types. So it's checking if a data structure exists, but we also have to tell it what type of data structure it is. So we just type DS type grid. Okay. And then we create the grid and we'll save it in our variable DS crops type. So we go DS crops types is equal to DS grid create. And now we have to tell it what width and height to create the grid. So with the width variable, this is actually going to be equal to the argument count, right? So because if we give it two arguments, then the number of columns we need the grid is going to be equal to two. And if there's more, then it'll be that. So we can just put arg num and the height for now, we'll just make it one because this, we're just creating the first row for the grid. I'm also going to create a variable called var height and make it equal to one. And this is going to be the height of the grid. All right. So what about the other case where we're calling the grid for any time that isn't the first. So the grid's already going to exist. So this is going to be false. So we're going to go else. Now for these cases, because there's only one row in the grid now, what we're going to have to do is increase. We have to increase its height and then that row will belong to a new crop type. But to do that, we have to get the current height of the grid so that we can resize it to be one more. So we're going to go var height is equal to DS grid height. And then we go DS crops types. And now we can resize the grid. So we go DS grid resize DS crops types. And then again, the width should just be whatever the argument number is. So arg num. And the height is going to be one more than the current height. So we're going to put height plus one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the height variable by one because we've resized the grid. So I want to change it because we need this variable in a second. All right, so this section has managed the size of the grid, but we haven't actually changed any of the grid's variables. The whole point of this script was to slot in characteristics of a new crop type and then set them in a grid. So we have to access the grid and then change some of its cells. So the way we access a grid is we type DS crops types. And then this little hash is the accessor to get the cell. And then we give it a certain X, Y coordinate, and then we can set it equal to some kind of variable. So this is going to set this cell equal to whatever we put here. Now we're going to have to do this a couple times for each X coordinate in the row. And again, so the number of times that we're going to have to do this will be the number of columns that we have, which again is just equal to the argument number. So I'm going to write a repeat statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to write var i equals zero and I'll explain this in a minute. And then we're going to repeat. And the number of times we want to repeat this because we're setting multiple cells is going to be equal to arg num. So we write arg num like that. And then we're going to increment i. So what this does is we can set the x coordinate equal to i so that the first time that we do this loop, i is going to equal zero. So we're going to be setting the first column. And then on the second loop, i is going to equal one. So we're going to be setting the next column. And so this way we can keep going across and this repeat loop is going to do all the work for us instead of us typing out this over and over again. And it also makes it variable to the number of arguments that we give it. So now, but what argument are we going to be setting it to? And we can actually use this little I here to do the same thing with the argument. So if we type argument and then I, so again, we're going to be setting when I is equal to zero and we're setting the first column, we're going to be getting argument zero, which is going to be this one. And then when it's one and we're setting column one, then we want to be setting argument one, the cost. And it'll keep going across like that. It's very nifty to do it this way. Now, finally, the only thing that we haven't really talked about is how do we know what row we're accessing? What's this variable going to be? Well, it'll change every time we call this script. It'll be dependent on whatever the height of the grid is currently. So if it's the very first time we're running this, we want this to be zero, right? Because it'll be row zero. And if it's the second time, we want it to be one. So again, it's kind of equal to the height, the current height of the grid after we've done all this resizing minus one because we're starting at zero. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable again called yy and then equals height minus one. And then we just set this to yy and we're finished. So now we can come into crops and define all of our crop types. I'm just going to copy and paste this a few times. And I'm just going to speed this up a little bit to put in all of the crops. All right. Now the thing with data structures is they're a little bit different to other variables. So generally when you run your game, variables like this are stored in memory and they're deleted once the game is done or once an object is deleted. But data structures, they actually persist in memory and they're not deleted when an object is deleted or when the game ends. So you have to do your own cleanup. So what we're going to do is make the destroy event. And we're going to say if DS exists, so if our data structure exists and the type is DS grid. So in the event that we're destroyed, we want to also destroy the grid. So DS destroy. And we'll copy and paste this and also put that in the game end. Okay, and now we're going to set up the code to make a crop. We're going to come into the step event and we're going to say if, if we click, then we're going to create a crop. And we're actually going to create another script to do this. But for now, let's just put if mouse check button pressed MB left. So that's just mouse button left. And then we're going to use a script that we create. And I'm going to call this instance create crop. And this is going to be quite similar to just the instance create layer function. So we're going to give it a coordinate and then we're going to give it a type of crop and it's going to create the crop for us. So instant create crop and we're going to say wherever the mouse X and mouse Y is. And for now, I'm just going to say crop. Let's go corn. It's complaining again, just because we haven't actually set up the script yet. So let's come into instance create crop. Let's give it a proper description. Instance create crop. Arg. And this is going to be the X, the Y, and finally the crop type. So now what we're going to do is, is create the instance, give the crop its characteristics, depending on whatever type of crop it is. Okay. So let's create the instance. So we're going to go instance, create layer. So we have to give it some arguments here. So we're going to go argument zero, argument one. We'll put this in the instances layer and the object we're creating is obj crop. And remember this function here, not only does it go and create an object for us, it also returns its ID and we can store its ID in a variable. So I'm going to store it in var inst like that. So now down here, I can go with inst and I'm going to change some of its variables. So remember in obj crop, we had crop type and growth stage duration. So now we can update this with our script. We're going to go prop type is equal to, and what argument do we want? Argument number two, which is actually the third one. But again, it starts at zero. So argument two and growth stage duration. And we're going to actually just pull this, the growth stage duration for this specific crop from our crop type grid. So we're going to go DS crops types, use the accessor. So remember the growth stage duration is in column one. And then the Y coordinate is going to be whatever the crop type is. So that's going to give us the row that we want for that crop. Now we can't actually just keep it like this because we're in OBJ crop. We're not actually in our master object anymore. So this variable here, it doesn't belong to us. We have to go get it. So we have to write props dot like this. Because this variable, this data structure, it belongs to crops and it's not a global data structure. You can actually make it global, but we'll just keep it like this for now. So the final thing we're going to do is very similar to this argument here that returns the ID. We're also going to return the ID. So we're going to put return inst so that if we wanted to do anything with our instance, when we use this script, now we can. And I'm just going to come back to the crop. So again, that we can actually see what crop it is because right now it's just going to give us a dirt mound if we start at growth stage zero. So I'm going to change this to three. Okay. And let's run the game and see if that works.
there we go. So we're creating a crop, but you can probably see the, the coordinates of the crops, they're a little bit off. And that's because it's kind of origin where we're drawing it from is at the top left hand corner. So that's where it appears to be when we create the instance. So let's go and change that. So let's come into OBJ crop and we're going to modify where we're drawing it. And we're going to set up a couple new variables for this. So we're going to say XX equals, and we're going to correct basically what we had before. So we kind of have to get from, so remember if we were clicking up here, it created the crop kind of down there. So we have to kind of subtract half of the frame width and then a big chunk of the frame height. So again, you might want to play around with these variables if you've got a different kind of sprite set up, but I've worked this out to be about X minus the frame width over two plus two and the Y to be frame height plus six. So then in the draw event, instead of drawing at the X and Y location, we're going to draw a bit above it. So X, X and Y, Y. So now when we run the game again, there we go. All right. That's a lot nicer. So now we're going to do a couple more things. We're going to add a planting mode that we can toggle in and out of. And we'll also do it so that we can select what crop we're planting. We're not always just going to be planting corn. So we're going to have a kind of visual indication of what we're planting. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to draw one of these over the mouse cursor and whatever one it's on, that's the crop that it's going to create. So let's come back to the crops and we'll add in to here. We will add planting and we'll set that to false by default. So we'll be not in planting mode at the start. And we're also going to create select crop equal to zero. And I'm actually also going to create an MX and an MY. And these are just going to store the mouse variables because I'm going to be using these a few times in different events. And this just means we can save it one time. We're going to be updating it in the step event, and then we can go ahead and use it in the other events instead of always just getting this variable. So we're going to go, so we can just set it to zero at the start because we're going to be updating it in here. So first we'll do the toggle. So I'm going to say if keyboard check pressed, and I'm going to say the P key for planting, P for planting. So if I hit P, I'm going to toggle the planting variable. So planting equals not planting. So we've done a similar thing before. So this is just going to make it so that if it's currently true, then it will become false. And if it's currently false, it'll become true. So there is our toggle. And now we put, so if we are planting, then we're going to do all of this. So if we're in planting mode, we're going to update the MX to be mouse X and MY to be mouse Y. And now I can just put MX and MY there. So now we're going to do our little visual indication of what we're planting. And again, I'm going to say if planting, actually we can just say if we're not planting, go ahead and exit. But if we are planting, then draw crop to be planted. And so one note here, make sure for you that this sprite is centered because we want it to appear sort of over the mouse right here in the center. So we're going to go draw sprite SPR crops picked. And now the sub image is going to be what determines what kind of crop is appearing. And so we set up a variable called select crop and we're going to be drawing whatever this is currently set to. So this could be anything between zero and seven for us because that's how many crops we have in here. So again, if you're using a different sprite, make sure you have a similar system set up. Okay. And again, the X and Y location is just going to be wherever the mouse is. So we're going to put MX and MY. Now we want to come back here. And instead of just making the corn, we're going to say again, it's just going to be whatever the select crop is equal to. So you can see how we're reusing this again and again, this little index of zero to six. Now, the next thing we want to do is set up a way to change this. And I'm just going to have it so that if we scroll up and down, we can increase or decrease select crop. So I'm going to put if mouse wheel up, select crop plus equals one. And the same for down, but I'll have it subtract. But I don't want it going over the number of sprites that we have, right? Because if select crop gets to something like 20, well, I don't have that many crop types and I don't have that many sprites. 
So we're going to start running into problems. So we're going to want to cap it at however many props we have. There's a few ways we could do this. We could get the height of the grid again, or we could get the number of images in our sprite here. So you can do it whatever way you want. I'm just going to put the image number. So we're going to come into props here. I'm going to say, so if select crop is larger than sprite get number, and this will give us the number of frames in the sprite. But again, because select crop, it starts at zero, we have to put a minus one. So if it's the case that select crop has gone over the number of images that we actually have, we want to put it back to the start so that it kind of loops. So if this is the case, then we're going to put select crop equal to zero. And now we need the case if we're going the other way. So if we get to a negative number, we also want it to loop back to the front. So else if select crop is less than zero, then we're going to set it to the number of images. So sprite get number SPR crops picked minus one again. Okay, so that should be it. So if we run the game now, we should have all of that system in place. So planting mode is off. So if I'm clicking around now, nothing's going to happen. But if I hit P, there we go. So we've got our tomatoes coming up. And if I scroll up and down, there we go. So it's looping. And if I scroll the other way, okay. So let's plant a few of these. So there we go. The chilies, the girds or whatever they are, corn, tomato and potato. There we go. So everything is working. So I think this is a really good start for us. We've got a bunch of scripts set up. We played around with the data structure and there's still so much to do. So we're going to have quite a few more videos on this, right? So we still need to set up the grid and we have to snap the crops to the grid. We're going to be checking if there's other instances that already exist before planting. We're going to be checking if there's soil beneath us before planting. And of course, we also have to set up the growing of our crops because right now they're just kind of stagnant. So we're going to be doing some of that in the next few videos. But for now, I hope that gives you a nice little start to the crop system and an appreciation for just how much kind of set up and how organized you have to be to create something like this. So I hope you're all well and I'll see you next time.